Okay, hi, this is your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and <clears throat> we're going to be simplifying radicals. Okay, the square root of 20 times the square root of 20 is going to be 20, right? Why? Well, aside from the fact that the calculator would tell us, the square root of 20 times the square root of 20 is the square root of 20 squared. Remember, you have an invisible 2 out here, and that if you were going to write this in fraction, uh, uh, fraction exponential notation, you would have 20, this 2 would go on top of the fraction power, that 2 would go on the bottom, 2 over 2 is 1, and so you would just be left with 20. Okay, let's go on. The square root of 80 times the square root of 125. Now, I don't know if that's going to be exact or not, so let's check it out. All right, second x squared, 80. All right, and I'll hit the right arrow key, times the square root of 125. Right arrow key, enter. And we get 100. So some of these can, when it's numbers, some of them can be done on the on the uh, calculator, so 100. Next one. Eventually, they're going to get us. All right, the square root of 5 times the square root of 2. I know that's not going to work out, but let's, let's do it anyway just to prove it to you. The square root of 5 times the square root of 2. Enter. Yep, nope, that is not the kind of answer they want. Type an exact answer using radicals as needed. So, oh dear friends, we're going to have to use the product rule of um, 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 radicals, the product rule of radicals. The square root of 5 times the square root of 2, they're both radicals, so we can say the square root of 5 times 2 which is the square root of 10. And as you can see from the calculator right there, this is an irrational number. It won't give you an, an exact number like the others have. We had 20. The answer was 20 for the first one. The answer was, uh, uh, I forget what the answer was for the second one. But here, here, we don't get an exact answer. We're now getting into the realm of what we call uh, irresistible numbers. No, irrational numbers. I think they're kind of irresistible, though. All right, so here's how you put that kind of answer in. Come over here to the square root key, then type 10 underneath. There you go. Check answer. Brilliant, excellent, and on we go. I'm going to clear the calculator, clear the key press, and now we're going to look at the third root of 5 times the third root of 11. Well, they're both third roots. The cube root of 5 times the cube root of 11 is going to be, because they're both cube roots, the cube root of 5 times 11, which is going to be the cube root of 55. And that's a 3, believe it or not. So here, D is going to be our answer. And let's check our answer. Nice work. So let's move on to number 5.
Well, here we have another one, the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 5. They're both cube roots, so we combine them. That'll be the cube root of 2 times 5, which will be the cube root of 10. Yes. You do that when, they're, when you have the same index out there, okay? You just combine them. Now, here's going to be something interesting. Now we're getting into letters, so the calculator will be of less and less value to us. We've got the fourth root of 10a times the fourth root of 3b, and so we're going to have the fourth root of 10a times 3b, which will be what? It will be the fourth root of 30 a, B. Let's put that answer in here. Now notice it's a fourth root, it's not a square root, so we're not going to use that. We are going to use the nth root tool. It's a fourth root, so I'm going to type 4 up there. Then I'm going to click underneath and write my answer, which is 30 A B. Check the answer. Yay, and we go on. Right, the square root of 121 over 144, I just happen to know that both of these are perfect squares. You'll become more familiar with them over time. Okay, square root of 121 over the square root of 144 is going to be the square root of 121 over the square root of 144. These are both perfect squares. The square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of 144 is 12. Suppose you don't know that. All right, let's put it in the calculator. Take the square root of 121. Now, if you're using a TI-83, you're going to have to put this in parentheses, but we don't need to on a TI-84. But I do have to hit the right arrow key, or I will be sunk. Okay, I'm going to say Enter. And we're not supposed to give a decimal answer. It says type an exact answer using radicals as needed. So I'm going to go to math, and I'm going to frac this. Enter, enter, and there you go. The answer is 11 twelfths. Now I'm going to try inputting this like I would if I had a TI-83 and see what happens. So second x squared, parentheses, 1, 21 divided by 144, parentheses closed, enter, math, frac, enter. Yes, I get the same answer, although on the TI-83 your answer will be a sideways fraction. You'll have 11 slash 12. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to put in a fraction. 11 over 12. Check our answer. Yes. Write 8. 5 over 25. Oh, what to do? Oh, what to do? Well, I know what to do. Take a look at the paper. The square root of 5 over 25, whoa, 5 will go into 25. So this will be the square root of 1 fifth, which will be the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. The square root of 5 is not uh, uh, a rational number. 
but the square root of 1 is. The square root of 1 is 1, so we'll have 1 over the square root of 5. Now, at the end of the semester, you won't be allowed to leave your answer like that, but this is not the end of the semester. So, I am going to answer this the way I think they would want it answered. In fact, I'm going to cheat and click right here. It, it went on to a different question. That'll teach me to cheat, won't it? All right. What can I say? It would have been 1 over the square root of 5. But now let's do this new one, and I've learned my lesson. I won't change horses in midstream, as they say. So 5 over 64 is going to be the square root of 5 over the square root of 64. And the square root of 5 is irrational. It won't break down. It's just the square root of 5. But the square root of 64 is 8. And that's your number. That's your answer. And actually, I don't believe the calculator would have helped you at all. Let's clear it. Where's the clear? There's the clear. And I'm going to clear the key presses. In here, I'm going to click on the answer box, and I'm going to make a fraction, but up here in the fraction box, in the numerator box, I'm going to put square root and then 5, and on the bottom, I'm going to put 8. And so I'll check my answer, and I'm right. So sometimes you have to actually use two tools, one tool inside another tool. Nine. Oh, this could be tricky. Let's see. What you've got here, if you were doing this on paper, would be the cube root of that negative is negative one times 343 over 512, and so you would have the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of 343 over, oops, cube root, cube root of 512. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. The cube root of 343, so remember how to do the cube root, but okay. We're going to go down to cube root here, and I'm going to take, uh, yeah, let's just do the whole thing, negative 343 divided by 512 and hit the right arrow key and enter. Nope. Okay. Clear. We're going to do it the right way. Doggone it. <clears throat> We're going to do what I said. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Um, but you could actually do that too. Let's do the whole thing. Math, cube root, negative, one, enter. See the cube root of negative one is negative one. So we've just taken the cube root of negative one. Now I'm going to take the cube root of 343. So math, four, the cube root of 343, enter, is 7. So this will be neg <clears throat> negative 1 times 7 over the cube root of 512. So we'll have math 4, which is the cube root, 512, enter, and that's 8. So negative 1 times 7 eighths is negative 7 eighths. Sometimes you've just got to do it in parts. Hi again. 
All right, here we are on homework problem number 10. We did 1 through 9 on the previous video. We're simplifying the cube root of r squared over 8. And that's going to give us the cube root of r squared over the cube root of 8. And eventually you'll memorize, if you haven't already done it, that the cube root of 8 is 2. So this is going to be the cube root of r squared, that's all under the radical, over 2. Now, I know that this is completely simplified because the power inside the radical is smaller than the power outside the radical. All right, so that's something to remember. Now, let's put the answer in. Have to move the calculator over. All right, I'll click on the answer box. And, oh, we're going to have, this is going to be interesting. All right, watch this. First, I'm going to take the cube root. Then, I'm going to take the fraction key. Then, uh, so, somehow or other, I have to get r squared in here. Da, there. Okay, so I'm going to have r, and here's the square, so I'll put it 2, over the cube root. Oh, oh, no, no. All right, we go back and we start over. Boom, boom. We're going to do a fraction because the ra only the radical, only the radical is on top right there. Okay, so up here we're going to do the cube root, cube, 3, r, and then hit the exponent key or tool. So I'll have 2, all of that over 2. Now let's see if it's right. Yes, it is. Okay. There's a lot to memorize here, so you're going to have to pay attention and even take notes. Okay. Now the negative sign out front is a negative 1. All right, so what we're going to do is look at negative 1 times, so here's problem number 11, negative 1 times the fourth root of 81 over the fourth root of x to the 12th. We're going to treat these differently because 81 is a perfect fourth root. 81 equals 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So let's practice finding fourth roots in the calculator. I'm going to turn it on, turn it on. There we go. And remember that when you're doing a fourth root, uh, from 4 on up actually, you, you tell the calculator, all right, I want my index to be 4, then I go to math, then I go here to 5, the x root. All right, and the TI-83s won't look like this, but the TI-84s do kind of morph into this. And so the fourth root of 81, I'm going to show you, is, is 3. Hit my right arrow and then enter. See, the fourth root of 81 is 3, but the calculator can't help us with uh, the fourth root of x to the twelfth. We're going to have to take the fourth root of x to the twelfth and change it into a fraction power, x to the twelve over four. What is twelve divided by four? It's three, x to the third. So our answer is going to be, well, the fourth root of 81 is three, and the fourth root of x to the 12 is x to the third. 
and don't forget your negative 1 out front. So our answer is going to be negative 3 over x to the third power. Now I'm going to put that in the answer box. Right there, move the calculator. All right, I'm going to have a fraction. Oh, and I'm going to have the negative first. Life is easier if you put your negative first. Excuse me. I'm going to have a 3 up here. Down here, I'm going to have an x. And I'm going to raise it to the third power. So let's check our answer. And yeah, we got it right. Remember, you can always replay any part of this video. Okay, so we're going to go on. Now, I happen to know that the fifth root of 32 is 2, but you probably don't know that. So let's go ahead and work this out. We're going to have the fifth root of 32 over y to the 25th. This is exactly like the other problem, almost. We're going to take the fifth root of 32, and you're going to take the fifth root of y to the 25th. You're going to have to use rational or fraction powers on this, but up here we can find the fifth root of 32 by going to the calculator and Let's clear it and saying 5 because I want that to be my, my um, exponent that I'm going to go to math and then I'm going to, why don't I arrow down to 5 this time where you have the x root and I hit enter and now I'm going to take 32 because I'm looking for the fifth root of 32 and there it is. So, oh yeah right arrow key and then enter. And it's 2. The fifth root of 32 is indeed 2. The denominator on the other hand is going to be y to the 25 over 5. And 25 divided by 5 is 5, so our answer is going to be 2 over y to the fifth power. Now let's put the answer in. fraction 2 over y, looking for y, and then the exponent key, fifth power. Let's see if I'm right. Excellent. I love it. Love it. You get in a rhythm. Now, this is where it starts getting hard. This is where you have to know what your perfect roots are. All right, we're on 13. We're going to look at 18. I need the square root of 18, but not a decimal answer. It says type the exact answer. And a decimal is not an exact answer. It's an approximation. So you have to know what your perfect squares are. You know that 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 18 is going to be the square root of 9 times 2, which is the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. The square root of 9, well, that's going to be 3. So our answer is going to be 3 times the square root of 2. And that is the exact answer. So my answer is going to be 3, and then square root radical, and then 2. 3 times the square root of 2. Check my answer. And that's correct. Okay, it helps to know your times tables also. 14. Again, I know my times tables. 14 
is the square root of 28, but I know that 28 equals 4 times 7, and I know that 4 is a perfect square. F the square root of 4 is 2. So I'll have the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. The square root of 4 is 2, so I'll have 2 times the square root of 7. Okay, now, uh, 2 times the square root of 7, so I'll have 2 square root 7. Check answer. Very good. Let's go on to 15. The square root of 1,000, well, 15, Let's put 15 over here. Negative the square root of 1,000 is going to be negative the square root of 100 times 10. 100 is a perfect square. This will be negative the square root of 100 times the square root of 10 the square root of 100 is 10, so our answer is going to be negative 10 times the square root of 10. Okay, so let's put the answer in. Oops, that was negative 10 times the square root of 10 check my answer. Excellent. So I think you can see that now is a really, really good time to learn your times tables. If you haven't before, you can learn them now. Because 12 will break down, here we have number 16, but what it is is negative the square root of 12. 12 will break down in a bunch of ways. 6 times 2, for instance. But 6 and 2 are not perfect squares. If you break down negative 12 to 4 times 3, however, 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2. So we'll have negative the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So the answer will be negative 2 times the square root of 3. So let's see, negative 2 square root 3. Check answer. Okay, 17, same idea. Ah, but is it? What does 35 break down into? I will let you figure that out. The cube root of seven, uh, 750, work on it. The cube root of negative 80, you're allowed to have a negative under the, uh, under the radical when it's a cube root, so work on it. And 20, work on that. 21, work on that. 22, I'm going to take a break, and we're about to start working on letters. I'll be back. I hope you'll be back, too. Hi, we're almost done. But now we're getting into some admittedly ugly stuff. We're looking for the square root of 49, x to the fifth, y to the fourth. All right, remember that we have an index of 2 here because it's a square root. 
it's not something you actually write, but it's there. That means we need two of everything. I'll show you what I mean. I need to break 49 down into two things, and look at that. It's a perfect square, so it breaks down into two sevens. I need to break x to the fifth down into as many two x's, as many x squares, I should say, as I can. So, x to the fifth will break down into x to the two times x to the two times x to the one. Remember your rule that says if you if you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. This is kind of going backwards from that. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so this is x to the fifth. Now, y to the fourth can be written out as y to the 2 times y to the 2, because y to the 2 times y to the 2 is y to the 2 plus 2, which is y to the 4. All right, now, we're looking for the square root of all this stuff. All right, so let me write this in a better way here. We're going to have the square root of 7 square, x square, x square, y square. I know I left the x, but you'll see y square, and then on the end I'm going to put the x, because x has a 1, a 1 exponent, and that's smaller than the 2, so it's not going to come out. Now, this will give me the square root of 7 square times the square root of x square times the square root of x square times the square root of y square times the square root of y square times the square root of x. Okay, the square root of 7 squared is 7. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of y squared is y. And then you have this poor little guy stuck under the radical. So now our answer is going to be 7 x square y square times the square root of x. Okay, there you go. You could have done it another way. I was debating whether I should tell you. The square root of 49 Take this, this times the square root of x to the fifth times the square root of y to the fourth. And now break this down. You can break x to the fifth down. You can break it down this way. You know that 49 is a perfect square, and the square root of 49 is 7. And you can also say that, well, since this is a 2, this will break down into x to the 4 times x to the 1, and you know that 2 will go into 4 when you make rational powers. And y to the 4th, well, 2 will already go into 4. So this is going to be the square root of 49, which is 7. The square root of x to the 4th is going to be x to the 4 over 2. I'm going to put that x at the end. The square root of y to the 4 is going to be y to the 4 over 2. And then there's the x. And since 1 is smaller than 2, I'm going to leave x underneath. So our answer will be 7x squared y squared times the square root of x. OK, you could try that on too. Okay, now, this looks mean, but it's a lot meaner than it appears to be. 27 
x to the 36th power and y to the 27th power. Okay, 27. The cube root of 27 is 3, and if you put that in your calculator, you'll find out. Also, oops, I messed that up, didn't I? Okay, here we are. The cube root of 27, x to the 36, y to the 27. If you take 27 and break it down, you'll get 9 times 3, and if you break 9 down, you'll get 3 times 3. So you can see that 27 equals 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 to the third power. Okay? So the cube root of 3 to the third power, x to the 36th power, y to the 27th power is what I have here. Now, when I change all of this into rational exponents, I'll have 3 to the 3 over 3, x to the 36 over 3, y to the 27 over 3, and that will give you, well, these 3's cancel. 3 goes into 36 12 times, 3 goes into 27 9 times, and so our answer will be 3 x to the 12, y to the 9. So let's try that. Let's see what we get. 3 x, then I'll push the exponent key, x to the 12th, and then to, to move over you're going to have to push your right arrow key on your, on your keyboard on your computer right there. So it comes down. And then y to the ninth. So I get my exponent power again, exponent tool, 9. Let's see. Ah, we did it well. We did it well. All of these rolls are coming together for us now. All of them coming together. All right, let's jump to 28, because this is a new topic. 28 is a new topic. I think I will change sheets of paper here because it's a new topic. Before, we could say the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 5, and because they're both cube roots, we could just combine them 2 times 5, and that would be the cube root of 10. But look at these. Look at this problem right here. You've got the square root of 2 times the fifth root of 3. We have a new rule you have to use here because you can't, comb you can't multiply these the way they are right now. Instead, you're going to have to change these guys to their rational exponential form. 2 to the 1 half times 3 to the 1 fifth. Okay, they're not even the same base. But look what you need to do. You need to get a common denominator, and that's going to be 10. So you'll have 2 to the 5 over 10 times 3 to the 2 over 10. Now watch what I do, watch carefully. We're now going to go back to radical form because this says we should use radicals in our answer. With denominators both 10, I can pull that 10 out to be the index and then I'll have 2 to the 5th power times 3 to the 2nd power that will be the tenth root. Two to the fifth is 32, and three squared is nine, and I really don't know what 32 times nine is. 18, 27, 28, looks to me like the tenth root of 288. Let's see if I'm right. 
Right, I'm going to choose that tool. I'll put a 10 here. And then I'm going to put 288. Let's see if I'm right. Ah, very good. OK, now let's go on to 29. You're going to have the same thing, but now you've got the same base at least. Let me kind of draw a separation over here, and we'll do number 29 over here. We're going to have the cube root of 2 times the fifth root of 2. Now, they're different indexes. So we're going to say 2 to the 1 -third times 2 to the 1 -fifth. Now, I don't need to get a common denominator yet because these are like bases. So I can add the exponents. Now you can put that in your calculator. In fact, let me call up little Wabbit Emu. There he is. On, on, OK. Um, we're going to have 1 third plus 1 fifth. So 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 5. And now math frac it. And you get 8 fifteenths, which is exactly what you would get if you did this by hand. So our answer, not the final answer, but our answer right now is going to be 2 to the 8 fifteenths. Now, j uh, just because I think I'm done doesn't mean I'm done, because this says I need to answer in radicals. So I am going to have to pull my 15 out to the front and I'll have 2 to the 8th power. Now, I have no idea what 2 to the 8th power is. So I'm going to clear what I have above, and I will have 2 caret 8, enter, 256. So our answer is going to be the 15th root of 256. Let's see if it tells me I'm right. Going to have the 15th root of 2 56. Did I say 285? Where did that come from? 256. Check answer. Woohoo! All right. Now I leave I leave all of this up to you lovely people and I hope you'll enjoy doing your homework now that I've helped you with most of it. It's not easy though, so I know you need help.